Hey everyone, Wannabot here, and welcome to the Scarlet Tower. It's a bullet heaven much more like heavily inspired by vampire survivors than most other bullet heavens that I usually play. I find the ones that are inspired like directly inspired trying to follow the vampire survivors formula. I find them to be a little bit repetitive, and so I usually don't touch them. Uh, but in this case, I wanted to actually give this one a, another go because I played the uh, I played a previous version of it a little while ago and rather enjoyed it. And they just launched a big update, and I actually have no idea what's been added, uh, but a big update just the other day, and so I figured I'd, I'd give it a shot. So, uh, each occultism point increases the effectiveness of masteries, magic armor, and spell power. I uh, shoot, I have no idea. Uh, sure? I don't think I want any new abilities yet. The one thing I want to look for is the Thunder Staff. We want to get it up to, like, level 5 or 6 or something like that. Uh, just to unlock a new character. Otherwise, I'm just kind of along for the ride, and we'll see what happens. So I think these are passives, and this is something else. Uh, it's purple, though. 14 su seconds summons darkness spirits around you for 12 seconds. Deals 5 damage. Sure. You know what? If it's purple, though, maybe it's special. Uh, let's see. Frost Staff, Corruption Crown, extra damage. Drains 1% of the damage dealt to enemies with 25% HP or left. Or less. New... Zero, level zero to one out of 20. Oh, okay, so some of these only go up to level five. This one goes way high. But I think I'm just gonna keep working on the corruption crown. We'll just make it work. Oh, is this bat? Ah, that's one of the dark spirits, I guess. So the other thing is it is actually worth it for me to, oh, got it. It's actually worth it for me to explore a little bit. Frost Scythe, 12 damage, blast of scythes that pierces through all enemies. Or through enemies dealing 10 damage. Once again, purple. I just, I don't know if purple is good or bad or... I'm gonna snag it. We'll just see what happens. And yeah, we haven't even gotten the ability to upgrade my weapon yet. Okay, well, 40% health or less during the night. Increase regen. Sure. I, I will take both. I don't think that takes a slot. So I'll just make it work. Whoa, that frost sight is actually pretty good. I keep trying to kill my own bats, and it keeps not happening. Uh, let's see. So we can increase the level of that. Max health by 1% whenever taking damage during the night, up to a maximum of 30%. Interesting. And then there's fireballs, which might be a lower quality. Do I want night growth? I suppose so. Only problem is I need to actually take some damage here. And unfortunately, right now, my character is too strong. I know I didn't finish my run last time, so I don't know. We'll figure it out. When you receive a shield, be healed the same amount over 50 seconds. Multiple shields don't stack cooldown. Stack of bleed ruptures uh, reduces movement speed or knife. Let's, um, let's re-roll these, see what I can get. Okay, so now we have the ability to upgrade my weapon, but I think I'm just going to... I think I'm just going to go for... Keep working on Corruption Crown, because I know you unlock stuff by by maxing them out. I also know there's evolutions in this game that are pretty wild. Ooh, windy? Oh, is it dawn? So this game works on a day-night cycle, and I don't know anything beyond that. Any source of physical damage now has a chance to apply bleed, summon a holy bibble to orbit you. I We could just go for a heavy orbits if we want to. It's tempting. Let's do exactly that. Because I've got a fire orbital that I'm not sure where that came from. I've got the dark orbital, which is rad. And now I've got the, the holy babibble. And that should be even better, question mark. I wonder if we're currently... Uh, oh. I wonder if this is either a holiday event or if there's just a random chance of it being winter. I haven't the foggiest. Okay, shield for three seconds upon draining. Cool down ten seconds. Shadow around you. Okay, I'm taking damage, but I'm also healing, like, non-stop, so... Working great for me. I guess I'm just gonna hang out here and see if I can specifically cook my way through some of these. Oh, I guess they just disappear over time. I don't know. It was worth a shot.
Okay, what does the upgrade on this do? I don't know. I'm going to just level up the Bibble. Which I haven't actually seen go off yet. Or maybe I have. I don't know. Okay. Katana damage. Yeah. I'm just going to max out. I guess what I can for now leave that last slot open if I if I can unless the thunder staff is an elite or an elite and evolution at which point uh, I guess I'm just gonna have to wing it and make it work that's actually pretty good I I don't know what has changed I'd have to go back to my previous footage of it oh hey we get to die let's see blast a hellfire now let's just keep working on boosting mine yeah so that's another reroll it's nice there's no way for me to, like, check a map here, is there? No. Shoot. Oh, there's the Bible. Okay. Yeah, because what I'd like to do is find a magnet of sorts. But I don't know how prevalent they are. I'm sure they probably exist. Okay, Corruption Crown Radius? Yeah. I'm just going to keep grabbing whatever. And maybe there isn't a magnet, and I'm actually losing out on a lot of EXP here. I sincerely hope either there's a magnet or the EXP all gets, like, kind of glommed together uh, when it's off screen, and then I can just go uh, pick it up. That's one of my favorite features out of Vampire Survivor is that very few in the genre uh, seem to do. What is this thing? I haven't the foggiest. I seem to be getting purple gems. When I'm in its vicinity. Okay. Oh, that's a meta progression thing. Of course. I'm taking a little bit more damage than I probably ought to here. But that's okay. Frost Scythe, mmm. Scythe can pierce through enemies, sure. Yeah, so I think we just want to keep looking around. At some point, I will find some kind of magnet, or I'm just going to keep finding these things. Yeah, so I think enemies killed in this radius give me extra purple gems. Going to be my functional assumption. Which actually is very worth it. Bleeding deals damage per stack. Plus 250% for each weapon and cursed talent you have. Interesting, but I don't know if I cause enemies to bleed. So let's just max out the Corruption Crown. It, it is interesting to have one of these games that I find immediately inscrutable and I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do. Uh, mostly just due to the fact that it's got a bunch of layered progression and like upgrade systems. And so I don't I don't have the meta baked into my head. Whereas like most of the other ones, it's just kind of like, yeah, wander around, just hit stuff. You'll find a magnet occasionally. And here's your like immediate goals. This one I'm just lost. It feels good in a way. Okay, shield upon draining, stack of bleed slows them down. I still don't know if I even cause things to bleed. Maybe my katana does, but I don't think the rest of my weapons do. I don't know. I'm thinking this this mythical magnet that I'm pining after might not exist. I did hear a noise though. Oh, something's shooting at me. It's this guy. Okay, what else do we have? Damage by three. Bibble velocity. I do really appreciate that you can go full orbital here. There we go. Well, 
I will take it. Let's see. Increase penetration, damage. Just do scythe damage. I've got whatever that metal brick is. Yeah, the main question is, do I stick around and try and get a bunch of levels? Do I keep wandering and look for the magnet that I I feel has to exist? Maybe it's one of those that I'm destroying most of the destructible terrain. Hmm. Yeah, can I check my build? Faith point, occultism points. I don't think I cause anything to bleed. We don't have any runes. Passive. Kill targets, solar aura around. No. I don't know. I don't, I don't think we have any bleed items, so I'm not really... It would be bad if I actually picked anything that gave me bleed. Maybe if we found, like, a passive that gives me it, but... None of my weapons do, at the very least. Well, I'm not doing too terribly, all things considered. Let's see. See, I know I can get food, which is a big heal. And then whatever that stuff is. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Do I just go back to wandering, hoping for the best? Because otherwise we can just keep murking these guys. Which does work. I just feel like I'm missing some stuff by doing so. On the plus side, I am still just cutting through most of my enemies. Like, just... I don't know. Uh, wet cardboard? You don't really cut through wet cardboard, though. You you mostly just kind of smush through it. Cut through it like something. I don't know, man. I, me and phrases, colloquialisms, I, I, they don't mix. I try, but I always, like, mix them up with other ones. Blast of fire scythes that pierce through enemies dealing... I do like fire. Okay, let's have that as our final weapon. I wanted to find the Thunderstaff, but I think that might be an evolution. Oh, that's the fire scythe. Yeah, the reason why I want the fire scythe is I specifically heal from fire damage. And so the more of that I can get, the better. Okay, effectiveness of masteries, 1% physical power, max health. Effectiveness of masteries, magic armor, I got it. Now let's see if I can actually kill one of these vegetables. I don't think so. Uh, no, we've definitely killed a couple. So I think we're good in that regard. Okay, wow, I've got a lot of gold. Uh, let's see. Increase damage and area? Sure. Okay, it's still not nighttime yet. I'm not sure how much that matters. I guess it does boost my max HP. Is like the one big benefit. But yeah, I think I'm just gonna hang out here. I wanted to look around and find a magnet of some variety, but they seem apparently very rare. And so rather than trying to continue to look for something that might not exist, or maybe I have to unlock, or maybe I'm just unlucky, uh, better to just kind of stick in one location and just grab what I can. Bleeding. Oh, blacksmith weapons. I have a chance to apply bleeding to enemies hit. Oh. 
Oh. There's weapon classifications. Good to know. Uh, let's see. Do we want to grab... Bloodmaster? Sure. I'm taking a little bit of damage and it's a good idea to probably offset that. I guess the other thing is, I could go back to exploring as soon as I've maxed up my weapons. That wouldn't be the worst idea. Yeah, any source of physical damage now has a chance to apply bleed, but I only have one. I need to pay attention to these things. Like, actually quite a lot. It looks like you might get more along the way. Each bleed bleeding stacks. Sorry, they keep going away. Or flashing out a little bit. One per perseverance point bleeding occultism points. I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm gonna say, now that I know, I will make it work in the future. I, I think I had picked occultism because it was purple, and purple usually means, like, high rarity. No, but this is purple too, so maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Let's max out the Templar shield at the very least. Because I know there are evolutions that show up at some point. I just don't know when that at some point is. It's probably off of boss chests, and I just didn't have any unlocked. That's going to be my general assumption. And there's a very real possibility we just don't have the stuff for an evolution here. Credit where credit is due. I am uh, healing like crazy. Alright. I think this is kind of night and day compared to the last time I played this. Like, last time I played this, I was... No, I did okay. Increase the amount of scythes? Absolutely. So does that mean we just fire two out? Uh, that's a little bit more than two. It looks like I'm getting a lot of the purple meta progression crystals now. Wait, there's something shooting at me. Wow, though. I don't know. I don't see it. I could have just killed it. It's entirely possible. So we'll say the... Oh. Oh, we do have a fusion with the corruption crown. Fusion with the thunderstaff. Fusion with the knife. Fire scythe. And no fusion. It does tell me where the fusions are, though. So we have at least one. I'll have to keep an eye out on it. There's got to be a chest around here somewhere. Maybe. I'm honestly kind of shocked we haven't had a mid-boss show up. Maybe they show up every five minutes. Okay. What else do I even do? Nope, just wander. Okay, whenever an ally joins you. Well, that's not going to help. I guess I'm just going to keep working on my, my passives. Interesting that I think the passives don't really affect any of my fusions. And can just be stacked somewhat indefinitely. Still no mid-boss. I suppose that's fine. I mean, it's not like we need an evolution right off the bat. We are just kind of clobbering to begin with. Let's see. Oh, are the big crystals actually just the EXP gems just fusing together at a distance? Maybe. Oh. 
That's kind of underwhelming. It's yeah, so leveling up some of the pa passive masteries uh, does not increase the amount by much, I think. Yeah, let's just go back to wandering around. I'd like to get some more meta progression, and these guys are dropping it. But I want to prove the existence of a magnet before we're done. I'll take a reroll, though. I like those. What? Who are you? It's a vendor. Move speed by 70. Cooldown reduction, or I'm going to go for the regen. Okay, so we've got Pope barf barfs a lot. Dude does hurt, but honestly, not that much. I've got I've got regen for days, so I can kind of just deal. Okay. Do I want to just keep grabbing random passives? Considering the heightened levels only increases the actual effects by like a smidge, yes. I wonder who on the dev team did that sound effect. Or was it somebody's dog puking? Feels like it's one of those like classic stories of somebody who just had the camera out, dog comes by and just uh, pukes up something. Okay, Darkness Cloak, rank 1. 14 seconds, 2 Darkness Spirits around you. Deals damage. So there's our fusion. Now we want to look for Knife. Or the Hellfire Staff. Or the Fire Scythe. There's a lot of things I want to look for. Okay. Yeah, I could just level this up for the time being. Let's just do that. Now, how does the darkness cloak exactly work? It looks like it just does way more damage. I can't tell if it actually does anything more interesting. But it does look like it has near nearly 100% uptime, which is nice. I probably could have considered reducing my cooldown further, but whatever. Yeah, I know I'm supposed to wander around. There's like an unlockable character that just can be found while wandering the woods. And we seem to be genuinely strong enough. So I don't, I don't really need to like farm EXP unless I really feel the need to. Okay, Glacial Staff, Skeleton Staff. I get some good stuff. Don't get me wrong. There we go. When we're getting plenty of darkness crystals, I think we might get more too. Maybe. The wandering around is only giving me a little bit. Maybe there's a meta progression that specifically shows where. Oh, hey. Maybe that was it, actually. Just a random character. And they're gone, so yeah, I'm gonna assume maybe we, we got what I was looking for. Still no magnet. I don't think magnet exists. So yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna wander the woods and hit stuff. Or not wander the woods. We're just gonna wander in circles. Oh, there's a frog again. Can I buy more stuff from him? I can. Gathering range. HP regen. Or Wall of Fire. Let's go for Gathering Range. Okay, Max Health, Skeleton. Oh, meh. Yeah. 
I don't think I have a specific want. Mostly, maybe knife. Interesting that this still has a cooldown. <laughs> Since it's not doing anything. I do really appreciate that each of these has a multitude of evolutions that you can get, depending on your preferences. Well, we know Hellfire Staff is one of them. And that also gets me extra healing, so probably worth it. Oh, that's what it is. Probably should have waited on that chest. Because I, I think we need those to get the evolutions. But, in the end, eh. Okay, I'm just going to park myself here where I get oodles of regen. Okay, nope, looks like I have to move a little bit. Every 1,000 damage suffered, 1% armor and 5% max life can happen 70 times. Limit increased by 10 for each curse level. Interesting, but also no. Okay, we've got a chest. Let's, um, let's farm EXP for a moment. Because, yeah, if I can get three levels on that Hellfire Staff, we can evolve the Frost Scythe. Oh, which is actually, it is a smith weapon. Good to know. Oh, we lost that really rinky-dink damage aura that wasn't doing us a whole lot of good. Yeah, it's probably for the best. I don't think I'm going to go for that combo again. It just didn't strike me as particularly amazing. Not bad, just not amazing. Okay, keep working on this. One more level. I think we'll get it in time and then some. And then I can really just go back to wandering around, because no reason not to. Ooh, we're getting a lot of darkness crystals. Whatever that meta progression is actually called. Only other complaint I'm seeing right now is just, I wish this had like three or four songs that it would cycle between. I think it's been one singular song the entire run. Uh, let's see. Underworld Tome. 10 seconds, Blast of Hellfire deals 500 damage and burns enemies. Sure. It wasn't that one, it was the other one. Oh, matches with the book, of course. Okay, that's actually really good. And yeah, I've got plenty of healing. Who can play at this scythe game? I guess I got rid of my scythe. Oh, wait, no, no, I still have them. Yeah, wants a fire scythe or a knife. If we can find either of those. Let's pick up the chest. Ooh. Uh, righteous armor, underworld tome, and a frost staff. Oh. Wait, do I have to take all? Whatever. We're right at the end of the run. I think last time death just absolutely wrecked me. And so now we're in the the nice position of completely demolishing his face. Oh, hello. I'm just going to live here for a bit. Let's see. Just gonna level that up a little bit. Alright, death is dead. Cross staff improves, but we've won. Alright, healing blood drop. Actually healed quite a lot. And we've unlocked two new heroes, so rad. Uh let's see. What was my best damage? Really? The Templar Shield by like a lot. Neat. Alright, so who have we unlocked and what what can we do with them? So we've got Veromas, uh, throws a scythe every, that pierces every enemy hit, dealing 50 damage. Uh, let's see. 
After killing an enemy, drains the soul, launches it into another foe, dealing damage, can affect every second, or kills 300 enemies, summons a portal that drags victims. Eh, it's okay. What do we have down here? Oh, and these are modifiers. So, tensils that the ex exorcism ability summons, damage is increased by 20%. Eh. Eh. I mean, those are all kind of just okay. I'd like to level this up. The levels get me, though. And I have a lot of money. Uh, let's take a look at Laia as well. So every 10% missing health creates two stars that fall around you, her, dealing damage. And then Starfall leaves a mark, of, mark on impact, doing damage. Additional damage if she's below a certain amount. Ah, but Grand Star. The other one. Blast an area does damage. Oh, and I can I can equip it. Let's see what the glyphs do. Now I'm gonna go back to this one. Yeah, let's play as her. So she's an alchemist. Summon the power of the moon to channel a beam of light. Beam lasts three seconds, dealing 50 damage. Alright, so what else do we have? Because we've got all sorts of meta progression that I can unlock too. Including like tears here, which is probably worth worth it. Uh, then we've got this. So we still need Thunderstaff to rank 5. Uh, and then went on... Uh, Plaguelands? Corruption 9. With all of the different characters. Weapon-wise, Puker 5 times at night time. Defeat 500 tentacles. I haven't found a single one. Alright, so those are things I don't even want to think about. And, yeah, just kill X amount and do, do things. So we also have this, which gives me bonuses to each character, like, race. So every three minutes, elves gain extra damage if it's day, move speed at night. Is that permanent? I have no idea. Let's see. I'd gone for vampirism because the one guy was a vampire, but that gets expensive. We can also spend gold to increase my regen and various other stats. Gathering range? Yeah, let's just max this out. Because no matter what, that's going to be useful. And then we've also got equipment. Uh, let's see. I've got... Oh, no, it's the bat owl thing. Twenty thousand increased movement speed further. Ouch. And then we also have enchanting, but this is later. Okay. Uh, let's probably go back here. Equip this. Do we want to just... Dump some money into this character. Okay, that does a little bit more damage. This doesn't increase the maximum though, so I don't... I, there's probably better uses of my money, like here. 10% chance to apply burn on hits. And damage dealt by burn heals you 2% of that damage, 1% per rank. So I think I'm going to max this one out. Let's see, extra attack speed. Damage to elites, damage to enemies below a certain amount of HP, or extra damage to enemies afflicted by freeze or burn. Damage for every life lost. Start the game with 10% damage. Okay, so less max HP, more damage, or I will frozen burn, chance to spread the area. Huh. Interesting, it doesn't want me to swap those, any of these. Well, whatever. Uh, oh, I still have some money. I mean, character we're going to be playing as is an elf, so we might as well snag that. I should probably put most of my gold into maybe these. Oh, we also have glyphs. Hold up. 12 minutes, regenerate 50% of your health. Magic armor increased by 5%. End of every turn, every 12 minutes, gain 5% max health. Oh, but these are expansive. Oh. But we can level up the elf one again. Sure, why not? Alright, we're more or less out of resources. Let's go here. I can't go to the plague lands. Beating Veil, Do... Pinero Nocturno, Corruption 3. Must be a boss or something. And we now have corrupted tentacles. But we also gain 
my armrests move. And they're noisy. Whatever, we're just going to dive into Night Pine and we'll just make it work. So we're still looking for the Thunder Staff. That's the one. Oh, so we're just dropping the freaking moon on them. Okay. Uh, let's see, so we could go Elementalist. Well, why don't I banish the Templar Shield? We've tried that. I'm just going to go for the Occultism point for now. When you accumulate even a number of alchemical mirror charges, gain immunity and damage for a little while. Alchemist's weapons have a 5% chance to grant a mirror charge. When any other mastery is triggered, alchemical mirror charge is consumed, and the mastery happens twice. Uh, let's see, and retaliates. Hmm. Okay, twin mirrors generate twice as many when you're below, low on HP. Gain immunity, and then I can keep working on occultism. I'm just gonna snag whatever. Unfortunately, we're getting a lot of weird passives. Oh, 5% physical damage and magical damage for each potion purchased from the vendor. I found a tentacle. The knife is smith. We're not going for smith. I wonder if we're just going to be unlucky here. I could try and go for, like, the Archangel Staff. Yeah, I might as well. Oh, but it has no known evolutions. So that's not great. Ah, moon oh, right, this is our Moonlit Staff. Yeah, I'll just figure it out. It might be one of those where I have to f equip the weapon first to find its evolutions. Or maybe the we the weapon that it evolves with just isn't unlocked yet. Let's see. I'll go for that. I don't think I have any shields yet, but maybe we'll get some more. I don't know. And my main problem is I don't know if we have any alchemical weapons even unlocked to begin with to make uh, this character's build work. Oh, it's 50%. When a shield runs out, it generates an explosion, deals a bunch of damage. I'm just going to work on maxing my Archangel staff. I guess I actually should be kind of damaged. Because I have those... Re well, I guess they're not retaliatory stars. But I do drop stars on things. Okay. When you take damage and have 25% or less health, all your health is... Oh, right. We've seen that one. Now I'm just going to work on my Moon Blast, I suppose. There. Now I'm sufficiently low on HP. But now we're, gen we're dumping way more stars on enemies. Okay, but now I maybe should actually take it a little seriously. Unfortunately, I don't have the uh, offensive potential that I did earlier. Let's go for the cooldown on this priest spell. I am reminded that I did have some trouble with this game when I first played it because it felt like a lot of enemies were... It was very easy for them to sneak up on me. And that my hitbox feels larger. I think other Bullet Heavens actually you have a smaller hitbox than you think you do.
Okay, we haven't unlocked any new evolutions. Let's see, we don't have the merchant yet. Nor do I even know where he'd be. Uh, oh. Or no, wait. Yeah, pilgrimage staff. We're just gonna stack a bunch of priest things. Something will have to give me an evolution, maybe, yeah? Or we'll just live without. Let's see. Ooh. Actually, it's kind of good. Uh, let's see. Keep working on the Moonlight Staff for the time being. It might be one of those where, yeah, I just don't have the items that fuse with these. Or they're just not in the game yet. That is also a possibility. Uh, let's see. Area by 100% also applies chill. Holy smokes, that's way bigger now. Okay, spell power by 50% of your attack power. That's actually kind of nice. I'm going to be doing tons of damage here. I just have to live. Uh, let's see. Now I'm just going to keep working on my priest weapons. Even if, yeah, there's no apparent evolutions for me to work with. The one problem I'm running into is I don't have any directional moves. I don't have anything that keeps enemies specifically away from me. But my passive is solid. Uh, let's see. Another alchemist. Sacred water. Uh, let's see. Do we want to... Yeah, sure. Fuses with the Hellfire Staff. There's our first potential fusion. And that's actually a pretty good one. So I'll have to keep an eye out for it. Uh, let's see. I'm going to max out my previous weapon before I start working on that one, though. That is just unapologetically the Santa water. Honestly, though... Even the Santa... I mean, here's the thing, though... <laughs> So much of, uh, let's see, so much of Vampire Survivors borrows from other games to begin with, because like the Santa Water is just based off of how the Holy Water works in Castlevania, which is it like leaves kind of a, a burning area. It's not burning, but like I don't know. It's it's hard for me to specifically uh, give Bullet Heavens flack for being similar to Vampire Survivors, because Vampire Survivors is not the first bullet heaven. Uh, it is unapologetically similar to Magic Survival. And so, whenever I see anybody getting, like, really mad, it's like, oh, this is just a clone of Vampire Survivors. It's like, y'all? Yeah. Guess what? Vampire Survivors is just a clone of Magic Survival. It's just, just put on a platform where people are going to notice it. Because Magic Survival was, like, mobile only. I'm legitimately good. Like, I, I do actually like what I've seen of Magic Survival. I just wouldn't play it compared to most of the successors. I don't play mobile games. Like, power to anybody that actually likes those, but me? Eh. Okay, I actually need to take some damage here. My Starfall doesn't, doesn't proc much if I'm not wounded. Okay. Right, I should keep an eye out for that Hellfire staff as well. Oh, the enemies are starting to live long enough that I'm actually setting them on fire, which is keeping my HP up. Maybe that's okay. Let's see if I can... Increase my might chances. 1.03% chance to inflict smite. Ouch. I don't think a lot of these passives are worth investing into. 
At least not normally. And yeah, unfortunately I have no real easy way for me to actually focus on that one guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm betting these affect this stuff. Probably. I'm going to get the first here and a lot of passives. Oh, I wonder if maybe that's what I should use my banishes on. Is pick the first tier and then banish a passive for good. Especially if it's not something I'm focused on. It's legitimately hard to tell. These are talents. Unless masteries are something else entirely, and I'm just wildly misreading everything. It's entirely possible. There he goes. Do I open the chest? I think I mm, might as well. I should probably get something. Because I think at this point... Oh, they do just cut... Glom together. But maybe that's just if there's enough of them in the area. We've got two chests. Screw it. Glacial Staff. I'll just take it. Combos with the Frost Staff. Ectoplasm Wand. Discard that. Okay, cool. So I can't actually discard the ones I don't want. Oh, Paladin is a completely different setup from Priest. Wow. Okay. I'm just going to go back to wandering circles. I mean, we're doing great, so it doesn't really matter. I think that Glacial Staff is actually working really well for me. Because it's creating these these giant zones that set a bunch of things on fire. Let's see. Burn does more damage if applied to a target hit by Frostfire. I think I'm going to just keep focusing on faith. Let's see. Do we have enough? No. I'd like to maybe go find that merchant as well. Oh no, these damage zones is actually the Santa water. The uh the glacial staff is the thing dropping the ice chunks. Oh hey, it's the dude. Okay. So we can just kind of chill here until that shows up. So we're looking for the Hellfire Staff or the Frost Staff. Because those are the two necessary ones for our evolutions. I think we can still get by without. But even then. Let's see, what else do I even do here? I, I do notice that because... I think I have this problem whenever I'm playing the more traditional, like, vampire survivors type. There's less theory crafting that goes into it. It's mostly just like, a, boy, I need this thing. And that I'm just kind of looping. Last damage of any damage over time effect does a ton more damage. Neat. Especially if I heal off of burning, I should probably consider focusing on an elemental build. But so many of the so many of the decisions I think I'm making, I'm making between runs. So it almost makes um Is the word perfunctory? I should actually look up the definition of that one. Burn has a chance of applying living bomb, detonates after three seconds, does a lot of damage. 
It's tempting, but I think I'm just going to work on maxing the Glacial Staff. Uh, but so... None of this would be a problem if I was just playing on my own, but because I'm recording this, I feel like I have to kind of come up with somewhat interesting commentary while I'm doing so, otherwise I might as well just be making farting noises with my mouth for the next 13 minutes. Which, like, okay, maybe that might work for, like, a video or two, but maybe not. I, I, I notice I have this problem with, like, a number of games, is that... Uh, well, there's also the Thunder Staff, which I need to unlock a character. I think I'm going to go for the Frost Staff, though. Well, there's Living Bomb. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. It, it tinges how I feel about games, uh, whether or not I can actually commentate over them. And so it ends up meaning that I'm actually judging certain games uh, more positively or negatively based on these, these aspects. Uh, so I've been playing through uh, Xenoblade, uh, the rest of Xenoblade 3. Which, yes, I know, I never finished my series on it. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Max out Glacial Staff. And then we'll start working on the Ice Staff. We've got enough time to hopefully get two evolutions at the very least. I don't actually know if we get any, like, big benefits from doing so, but still. Um, but so, like, I love Xenoblade 3. Problem is, character voices cannot be muted. Uh, or battle voices can't be. So the characters are just, like, endlessly screaming during combat. Um, and it's kind of rough. And so, like, the previous game actually had, like, a combat voice slider that I was very thankful for. I don't know why they they didn't keep it, frankly. Oh, what was that merchant? He was over here on the left, I think. Unfortunately, there's no way of knowing. These levels are just infinite woods. I should have hung out closer to him, but I wasn't thinking. Oh, there he is. Okay. Max HP is actually kind of tempting, but I'm going to go for the Luck Flask. We'll go find another one. Uh, but so, like, still enjoying Xenoblade 3, but I'm kind of thankful I never finished my series on it because trying to commentate over it was a nightmare and then I guess instead I was like editing it uh, so that you could hear me during cutscenes and hear characters during cutscenes and I don't know it was just a lot of extra effort in a negative way and so it's been kind of nice not having to worry about that uh but so, like, from a uh, making a YouTube video perspective, whenever I'm I'm like picking games to play, there's always that question of like, yeah, can I even make this remotely close to interesting, or am I just going to be wasting a bunch of my time? Just kind of, I don't want to say just rambling and filling space or not uh, and so like from my perspective maybe part of it is just like how engaged I am uh, you know probably has some effect on that or if I'm really engaged in a game commentary is effortless if I'm only slightly engaged or like fully detached commentary is difficult until it gets to the point where it's like act it almost loops back around and it becomes okay again uh, mainly the more detached I am with the game, the more easily I can just go into full podcast mode and just talk about any topic I want for any length of time, which is actually kind of nice. I think we're getting there here. Uh, the problem is that I'm no longer talking about the game, period, and that can feel kind of weird for me. Works better when I'm playing a game for like three or four hours and it just becomes conversational. Uh, it feels weirder for like a, a one-off video, but then again, this is my second video on this game. So, go figure, I'm going to be in a little bit more of a relaxed sense. Uh, I don't know. It's just an observation, especially while I'm here. As to why it might seem like I'm just scraping the bottom of the barrel of things to talk about. Because I think I rather enjoy how this game works. 
but I wish there were more decisions to be made mid-run. You know, so much of it is just relying on RNG to give me uh, the weapon or evolutions I need. And then other than that, I'm just kind of along for the ride. Not necessarily in a negative sense, but a... Uh, I will win this run no matter what. And, okay, maybe maybe not that. Let's see, Faith Point increases max HP by a smidge? Sure, might as well. How did I kill something all the way down here? Range, I suppose. Blizzard Wand. Icy Rain every 8 seconds deals 150 damage, applies chill. Sure, we're obviously taking that. We got another chest. I might see if I can get the Hellfire Staff before I open it up. We're about to get another potion. Why is it giving me another one of these? Go away. That doesn't actually help me here, though. Oh, whatever. But I, I think I always prefer the, the bullet heavens that are giving me a constant chain of choices. Because uh, otherwise I think it becomes a little bit more like brain turny offy. Well, you know what? I'm going to go for the Thunderstaff. Ah, evolves with the Bibble. Good to know. I'm also dying. Whoop. Happens. We did unlock the Dark Harvest, though, at the very least. And we got a lot of resources, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, still haven't gotten Lance yet. They're the one that needs the Thunder Staff. So I liked Laia. They were good. Uh, they didn't quite have as much healing potential, and maybe were a bit slower than the other one. Or I was just distractible because I am distractible. Oh, wait, what? Huh. It just didn't count as me buying those earlier. <laughs> I was wondering about that. Gathering range by 5% for every 10% health lost. More EXP, 5% per rank. Uh, frankly, kind of like this one. A little expensive, but probably worth it. Let's see, 5% movement speed for two seconds after killing an enemy. It's terrible. You know, that's not terrible. I'll level that up a couple of times. Let's just max those out. Let's see, attack speed, damage, ally on the field, nope. Let's see, we don't have enough to level that up. We do have some gold, though, so we should probably invest more into some of these. I'll max luck out, and then start working on greed. And crit chance. All right, there we go. That's all my resources. Well, anyway, I uh, still have no idea, actually, what's been updated with this one, so let's take a look. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'm... Oh, right. Display capture doesn't work. So perse Perseverance, Faith, and Occultism are the new things that got added to the game. Oh, yeah, it makes sense why I didn't remember any of them and why I don't understand how they work exactly. Uh, let's see. Added new world allied NPCs, which sounds interesting, but we only we didn't find any of them. Uh, some more enemies, but they might be later. Two new maps. Way more fusions. Uh, and ah. Uh, the reason why the uh, Divine Weapons may not have fusions is because they just got added to the game. <laughs> uh, let's see. 80 talents. Oh, yeah. The, the talents are the things that we found. Uh, so you'd start with the Master and then you get the tier, the talents along the way. Apparently there's a Tier 3 talent system. I'll have to take a look at those. And now you only find the Paladin talent if you find a Paladin weapon. Yeah, I'll... I'll really have to look into that for a future run, uh, but it looks like their next major update is actually 1.0, so that'll be probably sometime in 2024. My assumption is April, uh, and that's going to be when I come back and actually put some time into this one, because I like, I like Scarlet Tower. It still feels like it needs a little bit more, 
Uh, and hopefully, I mean, I think the mastery system, once I understand it, is going to be that. But then also even within that, uh, whatever else they add for the 1.0 should give it, you know, just that little bit of an extra push. It very much feels like, hey, but what if Vampire Survivors looked nice, had more evolutions, and had way more layered progression systems that were kind of customizable? And so you can really customize exactly how your run is going to go. And I think that's actually really cool. And I want to see more of it. I don't think I'm going to have a whole lot of room in me for bullet heavens like this anymore. Uh, mainly because Scarlet Tower and Vampire Survivors exist. And it's really hard to beat both of them at their game. Because uh, Slay the Spire, but pretty, or Slay the Spire. Uh, well, I mean, that's true too. Uh, I had the same problem with roguelike deck builders. of Everybody was just trying to remake Slay the Spire but prettier or with some new gimmick and it was just like no you gotta you gotta go further outside the box but i appreciate that scarlet tower really took the like core concept of what vampire survivors is and ran with it pretty far i think my one true thing that i would love to see is some means of finding uh merchants and npcs on the map because the map is just a big empty field and i just feel like i'm wandering aimlessly and so, like, a little marker, if you get close to one, saying, like, hey, you see a person in the distance, like, that would help a lot. Unless I just haven't found that feature yet. I don't know. Anyway, so with all that said, uh, if you guys like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like. Helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad new games every single day, then hit subscribe, because I got tons to check out and show off. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.